So hey everybody, happy Saturday. It's a, it's a gorgeous day here in Prescott, Arizona. And right now I'm not sitting at my computer. I decided to take you out into the living room because um, my iMac is currently grinding through a new 3D model. So this morning I decided, hey, what better way to do some things and show you guys um, some interesting features with, uh, with Litchi and what better way to do it than to actually go out to a construction site and have a little bit of fun. So I'm continuing my, um, my progression report, my progression video of new houses that are being built right behind this camera here. And um, those are coming along really good, but we're still talking about autonomous flight. So I wanted to talk about autonomous flight with Litchi a little more. In the last installment on Litchi, we talked about the Mission Hub at Litchi's website. And the Mission Hub is really cool, but it doesn't cover everything. So basically, it is for waypoints and waypoints only. So if you've got your smartphone uh, connected up to Litchi and you're making waypoint missions, you can share those waypoint missions online and to your other devices. So I've got two different iPhones because there is a buy one, get one free. And of course, I've got my iPad. And whenever I set up missions on Litchi for doing waypoint missions, um, it shows up on all my devices. Here's where it falls down though. Uh, when I do orbits and I save my orbits on a device, they're stuck on that device. They don't show up in the Litchi Mission Hub. So today I'm gonna take a look on this little iPhone here because I did a uh, orbit mission today. And I did the orbit mission. Now you can orbit a item or an area. So you could orbit a home or you know whatever it is that you wanna get the 360 view around. Um, you can set up an orbit mission on Litchi, and that'll work great. Litchi allows you also to do still photography and do timed still photography. So I did two things today. I set up an orbit mission while I was over at the construction site, and then I told the uh, camera to fire a photo every five seconds. So I had a 360 around these two new homes that are being constructed, and we'll go follow up on them in the near future. And I had a bunch of photos taken, actually 72 images to be precise. And out of those 72 images, when I came back here, I ran a really quick test on Metashape. Um, Metashape is created by Agisoft. It used to be called Photoscan, if you missed that video here. And the model came out pretty decent. I ran it on a really low level. So right now in the computer room, that is grinding through a higher end version. We're gonna see what that looks like later. But let's go take a look on Litchi here. So number one, I'm sitting here on the Litchi app and I'm in FPV, so first person view. So this is just for regular flight. And Litchi does a fantastic job of regular flight. I'm just gonna click on the FPV and now we can see the other things. So here's our waypoint mission. So let's go ahead and talk about that for a moment. So waypoint missions, you can just drag around on the screen, and if I tap with my finger, there I go. I now have a waypoint, and it's set to 98 feet by default, and you can see the little paper airplanes kind of facing to the north. Then I can tap a second one, and I could continue on and tap a third one, and I can go into each of these. So I tapped on it. I can go into each of these, and I can change the elevation for each one. So maybe we want to come up. We can use some presets um, for the cruising speed or the curve size. And there's all these presets that can control the overall mission. Right over here on the right hand side, we've got the folder first, we've got the save button second, and then we've got our mission settings. So you can go into mission settings, you can have the drone point the camera in the direction the drone is flying, um, doing the auto heading, or you can have it do from the initial. So if I've got it pointing one way, but then I veer off, it'll still continue pointing that way. You can also manually control it, or you can do the custom feature where when you create points of interest, it will actually tilt the gimbal to the point of interest, and it'll also rotate the camera to the point of interest. There are a lot of tools and features in here, and we'll walk through a full setup on Litchi in the near future, I just wanted to show you short and quick, so quick and dirty. And um, so what we're looking at, I just made a three point waypoint mission. I can also tell it what to do for returning to home, but we're gonna move on past this in a moment because I wanna show you what I did for you today. So 
we're jumping past the waypoints a bit. I think if you watch the original video um, where we're using the Mission Hub, you get a really good idea of what you can do for waypoint missions with Litchi. But we will go into more detail in the near future. But Litchi also offers us these other tools. So we've got the Orbit tool, the Pano tool, Focus tool, and the Tracking tool. And I'm also, as you can see, logged into Litchi right now. So if I do something with a new waypoint mission, that will show up on my Litchi hub. What won't show up on the hub is the orbit, but that's okay. We're going to go into the orbit mission, and over on the left-hand side, we have a little open folder. And as you can see, uh, 3R Granville orbit, which I did today, and I'm going to hit load on that. Now let's zoom out here. So I went out to the construction site. The Google map that I'm looking at right now doesn't have anything, so they haven't updated in a while. Let me tell you, there's a lot of houses out in this area. So where my little waypoint mission is, there's a bunch of new houses going in. And when you look here, there's nothing. So, and it's gonna be a while, quite a while, before Google Maps updates and shows those new houses. So here's a selling point to a potential customer, right? You can actually go in and show them an overview of their construction site. You can go in and fly areas that haven't been documented yet by, um, by the satellites for Google Maps or any of the other maps, Google Earth, etc. And so you can give more accurate data and a more accurate representation of a location um, by flying it. So this is, this is a big benefit to potential customers, so keep that in mind. So all right, I'm going to zoom back here on this orbit. So what I did is I actually drove to the site and surveyed the site. I could have pre-planned this here from the couch and I wouldn't have known exactly what I'm flying because I didn't have good reference maps. So oftentimes, even if you're pre-planning flights, even if you're setting up to do autonomous flight, you still need to go look at that location. Don't skip that part. You really need to do a site survey before you um, get to the business of the day. So if somebody hires you and says, I need you to come over and survey all these homes, you look on the Litchi app or any other app and you say, hey, I've got a reference map. I'm just going to draw it out on the reference map. Where are the telephone poles? Where are the electrical wires? Where are the tall trees? You don't know any of that just sitting on the couch. So you're going to have to get off the couch. You can start doing some pre-planning, but go do a site survey before you finalize the missions. Remember, on Litchi, I can update this stuff. I can save new versions. I can make duplicates and I can tweak originals and duplicates and use both of them if I need to. That is one of the really powerful tools of Litchi. You can save a lot of missions and then you can go to the sites and make sure that the missions match up with what your final results are gonna be. All right, so I dropped a waypoint right here because I walked between two houses that are being built. I stood right in the middle open area, which wasn't a lot of open area, and I had the iPhone with me. So. The iPhone was turned on, connected to the network, and I tapped my little waypoint here for doing the orbit mission. And let me just tap on that there. So I decided to say I wanted to try doing the orbit around these two buildings at 71 feet above them. I had the radius around these two buildings set to 185 feet. You can use this slider to move back and forth, and you can experiment, okay? So I was playing with this when I first got to the humps. Uh, I was a little too close in. So I started ratcheting my radius out. And I can start and stop this mission whenever I like to. That's another great thing, be it waypoints or orbits or any other missions on Litchi. You can pause or stop the mission so that you can retool to get it right. So I set the radius to 185. And then I set the speed. I said to myself, how long should this orbit around here? So I went ahead and set the speed. They've got 3.8 degrees per second. So the entire flight was going to be 1 minute 34 seconds. 1 minute 34 seconds worked out really well, and I got more than enough coverage to actually make a 3D model out of this stupid thing. Crazy. The next part, you can set the entry point. So I can decide if I want to come in from the north, the south, the west. It doesn't really matter. It could be nearest to where you're launching from. I liked having a reference point of going back to the south each time so that I knew as I was watching the video or watching the photos and watching the video on screen when I got back to my originating point. So where I was was actually east of the buildings and I decided to have 
the entry point at the south. Heading mode, so we can have it focus on the center, look right in between those buildings. We can have it focus outward, so it's circling the buildings, but it's shooting everything around the buildings. Really awesome. Then we've got counterclockwise or clockwise. Didn't really matter to me for doing this photo series, because this was a series of photos. And then you tell it the subject's height. These houses were less than 20 feet tall, but I decided to set it at 20 feet. If I had set the subject height lower, the gimbal would have been turned down, tilted down more. In the case of what I was doing, first I flew the drone out to give myself an idea of the gimbal tilt I wanted. Then I also tested out an orbit mission to see if the gimbal tilt was acceptable. To get all the sides of the houses, 20 feet worked out really well for me. If I had tilted it down to like four feet, I probably would have missed some of the rooftops. I would have had to pull the radius even further out, which I could do. But I wanted to be close in because I was trying to make a really good model this time around. So when I was completed with this, when I did these settings and I did this orbit setting, over here on the left-hand side of the Litchi screen, we've got that save button. So once you hit that save button, it's going to ask you to type in a name. And I'm just going to close that really quick. And so as you see, I have two orbit missions right now. Both of them are for Granville. The second one was just another quick orbit. Oh, no, this was actually my Sundance orbit. So I did the orbit. That's right. The other day I used my other iPhone to do another orbit mission. Like I said, the orbit missions don't get shared on Litchi Hub or between each other. So there you go. Bit of a problem. What are you going to do? All right. So I'm going to tap back on my orbit here. I'm going to open up that and we'll reload that Granville one. So in the end, I captured a bunch of images, and for the end of this video, you're going to get to see the final product of Litchi doing a single pass, 360 degrees around two buildings, and photographing every couple of seconds. So when it came to the photography side, usually I get a little fancy with photography and I do my manual settings and so on. When I'm doing these models and when I'm doing these 360s, I actually set the camera settings to automatic because I'm going to be blending all of this in my 3D modeling software afterward. Now, if you want to shoot beautiful, epic photography, I'm going to suggest that you're actually shooting in manual, shutter priority or aperture priority, depending on what you want to achieve. All right, before we wrap this one up, I also wanted to say I do apologize if the audio is a little weird. I'm using the uh, AirPods today because I didn't want to connect up any wired up stuff. So on the one phone here, we've got the Litchi app. So there you go. That's the Litchi app right there, and I'm recording on that screen. On the other phone, I'm actually using a voice recorder program that works with these AirPods. Finally, we're also picking up audio from the Sony A5100, but the audio is going to sound terrible because there's a lot of echo in this room, uh, really high ceilings. So we're going to hope that we don't have too much echo when it comes to um, the AirPods. So that's going to be our primary audio here. Uh, if you've been on this channel for a bit, you know that when I do outdoor stuff and when I don't want to carry a lot of heavy gear, I will rely on the AirPods. And we'll do something about the new AirPods in the near future because I'm wondering if they do a better job for audio recording because I'm still not super satisfied with these. They're a little tinny. Okay, so there we go. Litchi today, autonomous flight. So I actually have put something together to do a 3D model of a location just by using Litchi's orbit features. So Litchi can also help you in your 3D modeling. We're going to talk more about 3D modeling software down the road, but Litchi can be used to supplement your final 3D models when you're really trying to get good detail on building sides and, you know, expand beyond just doing the grid patterns and shooting straight down. So we're going to see how that model comes out. I don't even know how that model's come out yet. So I'm really excited. And I actually have to go back into the computer room because I think the photo alignment's finally done. The next step is uh, building the dense point cloud. And if you don't know all about this 3D modeling uh, jargon that I'm just throwing out there, I do have a course on Udemy that covers an introduction to 3D modeling. It's very introductory. So if you know a little bit about 3D modeling, it's probably not for you. But if you're just getting into it, 
and you want to have some of the basics uh, explained to you and also learn about some of the software applications like Litchi and like Ground Station Pro and Map Pilot. That class might be just what you're looking for. All right, everyone, now I got to go offload all this stuff too. And stay tuned because at the tail end of this, we're going to take a look at that 3D model that was created with Litchi and Metashape.